This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Stop blaming your lack of success on someone else. If someone's not celebrating you, they're just tolerating you, it change your environment. You know, if you take your five best friends and you average their income, that's your income. I mean, it's going to be very close. You know, Les Brown says it best. He said, if you hang around with nine broke friends, guess what? You're the 10th. Hi, my name is Eero Kafetz and this is The List Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting-edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. Welcome back to another edition of The List Building Lifestyle with your host, Igor Kafetz. And today, I've got the pleasure of hosting Matt Morris, the author of The Unemployed Millionaire. At just 18 years old, Matt founded his first marketing business. At 20, he dropped out of college to pursue business full-time. At 21, he was homeless and deeply in debt, living out of a beat-up Honda Civic, bathing in gas station bathrooms. True story, by the way. It was then that he made a life-changing decision to reinvent himself and his career. By 29, Matt was a self-made millionaire, and now he travels around the world speaking, coaching, and mentoring people in becoming unemployed millionaires. Matt, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, man. Excited to be here. We're excited to host you. Trust me. So, Matt, I just, you know, I'd love to just dive right in. And in your book, you debunk several misconceptions, which are often used as an excuse for being broke by, you know, People, well, I work with uh, with uh, folks, mostly beginners who are just getting into the pay traffic game, promoting their businesses, and that's what I see a lot. Like excuse after excuse and reasons why they fail or why they're incapable of succeeding and becoming a rich and wealthy that are rooted outside of self, if you will, right? So let's give list builders a quick rundown of the top three myth or urban legends that they got to watch out for. <laughs> okay. Well, that, you know, in my mind, belief is everything, you know, belief is going to make or break you. And, you know, I, in fact, I did a Periscope this morning and uh, I did a couple, you know, Q&As and someone said, you know, do you believe that it's going to happen when it's going to happen for people? And, uh, you know, I, I, the answer was no. I mean, my belief is it's going to happen for people when they make it happen. You know, it's like, I think people will sit on businesses, sit on, you know, their journey to success for years years not doing shit because it's like, oh, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. You know, I'm going to take my time. No, you got to make it happen. You got to be intentional with it. You know, that's an excuse to stay in your comfort zone. It's an excuse to be lazy. It's an excuse not to educate yourself. And so, you know, I, I mean, I think you have to be super intentional with making it happen and you got to be willing to go out and do the work. You know, I mean, it's whether it's network marketing or internet marketing or I mean, sales, you name it. I mean, the reason why people fail is because they're lazy in most cases. They're just, they're lazy to do the work or they're lazy to learn. They're lazy to become an expert in it. So, you know, that's one. I mean, number two is just, and I think this is maybe the biggest, it is really the underlying question of really, can I do it? Can I be successful? Because we've been Everyone has been brainwashed uh, without a doubt. You know, we grew up, our parents brainwashed us, telling us different things. You know, I mean, no matter where I go around the world and speak, I, you know, I, I, I'll say I'll prove everyone's brainwashed. Money doesn't grow on and everyone says trees. I mean, our parents, I guess, told us that growing up. Money isn't everything. Everyone says everything, right? And so we've been programmed to believe, you know, money's the root of all evil, right? And so we've got these negative belief systems. And I grew up with them too, you know? I mean, I had it going on. I was raised by, I mean, I had a crazy, uh, crazy upbringing. My father went to prison when I was, I think, five. Got out of prison, severe alcoholic. He committed suicide when he was 13. Raised by a single mom, you know, struggled financially growing up. Thank God my mom wasn't an excuse maker. You know, she worked two and three jobs to work her way through college. Then she worked her way through law school. 
you know, became an attorney, became a judge. Uh, she actually just recently retired as a judge. So, you know, I had that inspiration. But, you know, where the way I grew up was, you know, my father wasn't around and, you know, committed suicide. He missed my birthdays and, you know, avoiding child support and all that kind of thing. So, you know, I adopt a belief that says, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I didn't have a lot of friends. So I made up a story that, you know, I'm not good with people. I'm shy. I'm not confident. So I had all this baggage, all this garbage, you know, was my belief system. And, you know, my be- about me being able to actually go out and succeed in life. I didn't have a lot of people that I saw other than my mom. And what was interesting is my mom, even when she became an attorney, when I was in high school, she got a job as a staff attorney, which is a, you know, a low paying position. She actually was working a second job selling cosmetics in the mall, even as an attorney. And so, you know, I had this belief that money's hard to come by. And no matter how hard you work, money's hard to come by. And guess what I attracted in my life? I attracted, you know, scarcity. I attracted poverty. And, you know, I struggled and I struggled and I struggled. And, you know, I finally realized how messed up my belief system was. You know, I was always saying, why am I such an idiot? Why am I so broke? And, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins and, you know, many others as well. But, you know, what I believe is the quality of your life is kind of based on the quality of the conversations you have with yourself. And if you're always having negative scarcity conversations, you're going to produce negative, scare, you know, scarcity type results. So, you know, I think it's important for everyone to understand, the, you know, the income that you're earning right now is exactly what you believe you should be earning. Exactly. I mean, to the dollar. Um, Otherwise, you'd be earning more or less. I mean, if you believed you should be earning less, you'd be earning less. If you really believed you should be earning more, you'd be earning more. You'd figure out a way to get there. You know, motivation. Everyone is like, man, uh, how do I get self-motivated? Matt, you're so motivated. How do you do it? Well, you know, you got to understand how motivation is created. Motivation is created when there's a gap between the results you're experiencing and the results you truly believe you should be experiencing. And so most people are, you know, they've never worked on their belief system. And they typically, you know, think, all right, whatever belief system I have, I have. No, you got to be intentional with producing motivation. You got to be intentional with producing your desire. People are like, well, I just don't have that burning desire. Well, you don't have the burning desire because you're a pussy, because you don't take the time to work on your desire. You don't dream build. You don't program yourself. And so, you know, how beliefs are created, you know, you could go read a book, what to say when you talk to yourself. And, you know, with what to say when you talk to yourself, he really, I mean, I think that book probably does the best job of understanding and explaining the science of the mind or, you know, what I would call kind of behavioral psychology. You know, and if you look at the ladder of, you know, behavioral psychology, you know, your success comes from your actions, your actions come from your feelings, your feelings come from your thoughts and your beliefs. And so, you know, everything boils down to what is your belief about you? What is your belief about network marketing? What is your belief about internet marketing? What is your belief about success? What is your belief about money? You know, so that's the core. Well, how do you fix the belief? It's work. You got to work to fix the belief. And the way you fix the belief is through programming. You've got to be constantly programming yourself in a positive manner. Otherwise you're going to produce negative results. And so, you know, like I, I I had to take the time, you know, when I struggled for five years, I struggled as an entrepreneur. So I'm by no means, you know, the smartest guy in the world. It took me a while. I had to figure it out. But I realized, all right, I need to be intentional with who I am. So who do I really want to be? Well, I want to be someone who's filled up with desire. I want to be one of the most confident men in the world. I want to be able to, you know, produce millions of dollars. I want to be able to travel around the world. I want to do all these things. So I had to, you know, intentionally program myself that way. So you got to have the awareness and the understanding of how beliefs are created. Beliefs are created through three ways. Number one, and the most important way is what you say and what you think about yourself. So if you're saying things like, I'm an idiot, you got to block that out. You cannot continue to say things like that. Otherwise, you make it more true. So, you know, that that's a big piece of it is that internal programming. Number two is your external programming. So throughout your life, what have other people said about you? What have your teachers said about you? What have your friends said about you? And, you know, we take it on to be true. What other people say about you? And if you continue to allow other people to negatively program you, shame on you. 
Okay, that's your fault. You know, it's like, oh, well, my family's not supportive. I hear it all the time. My spouse isn't supportive. My family's not supportive. Well, shame on you. Stop blaming it on them. Stop blaming your lack of success on someone else. If someone's not you know, if someone is not celebrating you, they're just tolerating you, it change your environment. You know, if you take your five best friends and you average their income, that's your income. I mean, it's going to be very close. You know, Les Brown says it best. He said, if you hang around with nine broke friends, guess what? You're the 10th. So um, you got to change your environment, get around a better, better positive environment. And then the other thing is your experiences. So the experiences that you've had throughout your career, throughout your career in business, as an example, if you don't have awareness of how you know this works, you can have a negative experience and allow that to negatively program you. Or if you can adopt a belief that says nothing has any meaning until I give it meaning, you can adopt whatever belief you want. So I'll give you an example. I started an internet marketing company when I was about 24. I had an organization and network marketing was doing well, had an idea for a marketing system. So put it together and ended up doing really well and, uh, you know, making great money. You know, I'm 20, what was I, 25, crushing it. And long story short, I didn't do a very good job of, you know, managing the company operationally, expenses, things like that, and ended up $100,000 in debt. Had a business partner and uh, we chose to part ways. I took over the business and, you know, being $100,000 in debt at 20, I think I was 26 at the time. I, I could have done two things based on that experience. I could have said, man, I'm a really shitty businessman. I need to go back to, you know, doing whatever I was doing before. Or I can say, you know what? This experience means that I'm an amazing business person. It means that I'm an amazing leader because now I know what not to do. Now I'm tough. Now I've got battle scars. So let's go back into battle. And so, you know, went back into battle and, you know, was able to pay off all the debt and make more money than we'd ever made. When I was 32, a couple of years after that, I started my own um, network marketing company, did amazingly well, you know, brought in people from all around the world. And, you know, I made every mistake you can make. We got hit with, uh, you know, a large amount of fraud, crippled our company. I ended up $750,000 in debt. And, you know, it was tough at the time, but I had to say, you know what? I got one of two choices. I can say, you know what? I'm going to go back to, you know, I'm not going to try so hard in the future. Or I can say, man, I got to get excited about this because this is going to be an amazing come from behind story. A setback is a setup for a comeback. And so, you know, had to suck it up and, you know, go out and produce again. And, you know, was able to pay off that debt and make more money than I ever made before and create a much better lifestyle than I ever made before. So, you know, be super intentional with, you know, your belief system. And, you know, that, that kind of covers two or three. I mean, I, I could go through all kinds of stuff with you, but, you know, one is I think you have to be grateful for all of the challenges that come up. You know, when I was 21, uh, I was $30,000 in debt. I took a job selling swimming pools, living out of my car, living out of my Honda Civic. And, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for that experience now because it gave me a story to tell. I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that it took me five years to become successful as an entrepreneur because I feel like I can relate to people much more and I can help people much more than someone who had, you know, quick success. I can relate to the lack of belief because I had the lack of belief. I can relate to the frustration. I can relate to the discouragement because I had it, you know, so now I'm grateful for it. So I think that's one of the beliefs that you have to, it's a little counterintuitive when challenges come up, be grateful for them because, you know, what I believe is if you want to build a really tall building, you got to dig a really deep foundation. And so when the challenges come up, congratulations, you're making your foundation even deeper, even stronger. And then, you know, another belief is having the belief that no matter what happens, if something negative happens, you're going to get it all back and more. Any adversity carries with it a seed of a greater benefit. So whatever negative happens to you, have a positive expectation, get excited about it because it's just part of the game. You know, for me, success, life, business, it's a game. You know, I love the game. It's why I feel like I can work 16 hours a day and never feel like I'm working because I'm playing. I mean, it's literally, it's just a game for me. I'm excited about it. And how is it exciting for me? Like, why do I get so excited that it's a game? I tell myself it's a game. I tell myself I'm excited about it. I tell myself I love to work hard. And, you know, that's what manifests. 
Wow. Well, you mentioned so many great concepts, but I want to circle back to the one about failure and how your setbacks are have turned into your gold. You know, th- there's one concept I learned from David D'Angelo, and he said something really profound. I don't remember who he learned it from, so I'm just going to credit David D'Angelo. He said that failure is a learned concept. In other words, you're not born into the world where failure actually exists. It is a belief that someone else has instilled into us and therefore it does not exist. So we can make failure into anything we want. And I believe the most productive thing a failure can become for you listening is a learning experience, a absolutely incredible and super, super valuable learning experience. Is that, is that what you did with your failures? Yeah, that's it. That's it. I mean, every failure is a learning experience. It's learning what not to do. And, you know, in, it, whether it's internet marketing or network marketing and network marketing, I just did a webinar with my uh, team in Australia last night and today their time. And, you know, the false belief is that it's you go straight towards success. In network marketing specifically, you have to go through massive fail, massive rejection. Rather, you have to go through massive rejection. And see, what I did for years is I would only show the business to someone if I thought there was a chance they would enroll. But if I, if I thought there's no way this person will enroll, I wouldn't show them the business because I thought I had to avoid rejection. You know, because of the fear of failure, that's what I did. And one of the things that turned things around for me is when I finally realized, wow, I should make it a goal. I should go get rejected more. I should get excited about it because the more rejection you get, the more success you get. Tom Watson, founder of IBM, he said, if you want to greatly increase your success in life, double your rate of failure. In internet marketing, you know, I have a information publishing company now and, you know, have run one for years. And one of the things that we do all the time is we fail. You know, we run offers, different ads, we do split tests and, you know, we're always testing and tweaking. And, you know, the only way if you're going to, you know, test an offer out and you're going to split test it, one of them has to be a failure. One of them has to work less than the other one. And so, you know, we just get excited something doesn't work, we say, okay, cool. Now we know it doesn't work. Try something else. That doesn't work. Try something else. But we know if we keep trying things, eventually we get something that works. So, you know, don't, don't uh, despair over the challenges or the failures. They're learning experiences. So yeah, man, you're, uh, you're spot on. Well, wow. well, now I'm curious to hear what, what are some other sabotage patterns you've noticed? sabotage, like things that sabotage people. Self-sabotage, of course. Self-sabotage. I mean, you know, the belief system is the biggest thing. Others is, um, you know, and the belief is what leads to most of it because, you know, you you could say people self-sabotage themselves because they don't feel smart enough. They don't feel intelligent enough. If you study leadership over the last hundred years, and you take the top leadership gurus and the qualities that uh, great leaders have, one of the qualities, one of the, you know, about six that have been consistent over decade by decade is uh, intelligence. And people make the mistake of saying intelligence is something you're born with or not born with. And if you look at the meaning of intelligence, it's the capacity to learn. Okay. So great leaders have an amazing capacity to learn. Well, the capacity to learn is learned. How do you get a bigger capacity to learn is you learn more, you work at it. It's kind of like going to the gym. You know, if you were to do bicep curls every single day for a year, you'd have an amazingly strong bicep. You can't help but have a bigger capacity there to lift more weights. You know, by learning and applying and learning and applying, guess what? You become more intelligent. You increase your capacity to learn. So it's having the belief that someone else is smarter than me. No, someone else is. Maybe they were born with a little bit higher IQ, but with work, I can become more intelligent. I can have more of a capacity to learn. You know, so that's one. I mean, there's just so many things that hold people back. It's hard to... uh (laughs) hard to even say what the main things are because, you know, there are so many, you know, not breaking out of your comfort zone, not becoming an expert. You know, I think one of the biggest keys, whether it's network marketing, internet marketing, sales, relationships, parenting, whatever it is, if you want to succeed at the highest levels, you've got to become an expert. How do you become an expert? I was listening to uh, an audio years ago, it was over a decade ago, and as Jack Canfield was talking about this concept of being an expert, and he said, if you were to read five books, 
on one subject, that's more than what 99% of everyone in the world will ever do. Most people are going to be too lazy to do that. So you can be in the top 1% knowledge level compared to everyone else in the world if you go read five books, right? Because it's amazing when I speak at events, I'll say, how many of you raise your hand if you've read five books specific to network marketing? And very few hands go up. It's like, you know, your goal is to become a millionaire in network marketing, but you haven't even read five books. How do you, I mean, how can you honestly say you want to become a millionaire if you're not willing to go out and learn? Uh, Same thing with internet marketing. You know, I mean, there's no shortage of training out there. And so, you know, that's a big one. And then it's investing in yourself. See, most people will think nothing of putting thousands of dollars a year into fuel for their vehicle, their car, their truck. But, you know, they complain about having to invest money in their most important asset, which is their mind. Okay. So most people, one of the reasons why they fail is they don't invest in themselves. They don't invest in the business. You know, if you were to start a McDonald's franchise, you got to go to Hamburger University. You know, you're going to have to spend well over a million dollars per McDonald's just to start one franchise that on average is going to earn you a little over $100,000 a year. But it's like, you know, come to this training event for $200 and people are saying, I can't afford to go. If you can't afford to go, you can't afford to have success in life. If you can't afford to buy an educational program, you can't afford to have success. It's like I went to Tony Robbins when I was young and he had his master university and it was $10,000 to go to, you know, through his master university. And I didn't have $10,000, but thankfully what I realized is the biggest reason that I needed to go to his master university was to change my belief system, was to change who I was so that I could get into a situation where I never had to say, I don't have $10,000 to invest in myself. It's sad. If you don't have $10,000 to invest in your future, that's sad. No one should be in that situation. And, um, You know, so uh, it's the investment into the mind. You've got to have that as a huge priority. I invest tens of thousands of dollars every year on my education because if I want to be a top producer, if I want to be in the top, you know, one half of 1%, I better know more than 99.9% of everyone else. And the way you do that is through the investment. You know, I'd like to touch, kind of go back on two points you mentioned. First off, you know, people who say they can't afford stuff. Well, in my experience, that's, of course, a an issue of will, not, you know, can because you you will be able to afford something you really, really want. It's just a matter of how bad you want to invest in yourself, how bad you want to succeed in life. And like you said, most people are just too lazy to do that and too uninspired, too uninterested, too bored, too complacent, too inept. And you know the list kind of goes on and on and on. But truth of the matter is, if you want to go to an event or get a coaching program or let's just say in my case, get some traffic and you don't have a couple of hundred bucks to invest, th- this is exactly the reason why you absolutely have to go and get that money. You know, you not being able to invest or not having that money available to you immediately is the very reason why you need to work harder and why you need to take those chances and risks to achieve greater success in business. Yeah. I mean, the way I put it is if if you don't have a few hundred dollars, if you don't have $10,000, whatever it is, that problem, that challenge is more powerful than you. And how long are you going to live your life letting a small sum of money be more powerful than you? You got to make the decision that you're going to be more powerful than your lack of money, your lack of 10,000. I mean, I'm saying $10,000 because I think everyone should be at that point. I mean, I sell a program for like such a ridiculously low, it's, you know, $300. And people are like, I, you know, I'm going to save up the money. And, you know, I, I'd love to do this, but I don't have the $300. It's actually three payments of $97. You know, I mean, gosh, you can't come up with $97 in one month. You're never going to have success with that mindset. You just never will. And they're like, can I pay you back? Can I, you know, can I get it on a loan? No, no, not at all. You decide to be more powerful than your problem. Come up with the money and there you go. It's like when people say they don't have the money to uh, join the program. Like, you know, I always ask this question, who do you love the most? You know, is it your mom, your wife, something like that? Uh, My mom. I say, listen, well, if your mom, let's say she got pulled over 
And there was a case of mistaken identity from the police. And they thought she committed some heinous crime and they took her in. And she calls you saying, oh my God, I'm in this rat hole jail cell and I need $500 to bail me out. You know, are you going to bail your mom out? Or are you going to let her spend the night in jail with a bunch of crack whores? You're going to come up with the $500. That night, you're going to come up with the money, okay? So anyone could come up with the money. If I said, I will sell you a a Ferrari tomorrow for $1,000, you'd come up with the money because you know you can go sell it. So it's never a question of, you know, do you have the money? It's a question of, do you have the desire to change your situation? You know, your example is so modest. You know, I usually say, look, if I took your daughter hostage and put a gun to her head, would you get me $10,000 tomorrow? You know, (laughs) obviously the answer is yes. So going back to the second point that really resonates with me, and that is books. You know, when I when I used to sell $15,000 coaching packages a couple of years ago, back when I was doing intensive coaching, one of the questions we asked on the questionnaire was, what are the three books about marketing or, you know, success that you read in the last six months. So whoever had less than three books did not qualify. And whoever, you know, told me about the books they read, which are like either just philosophy books or, you know, books that didn't even have to do anything with marketing, like fiction books, I knew immediately that that person is not ready yet to even talk to me. Like they're not ready to commit at that level, not just financially. Because what that financial commitment is going to make you do is going to make you take the whole thing really, really seriously. And you can't possibly comprehend investing $15,000 in yourself, even if that is to learn how to make $15,000 per month for the rest of your life, or at least for, the, for another decade. I mean, I don't know how, how long the internet is going to you know keep printing us money like that. So even at that point, like no one will do it unless they are educated to a point of being aware of what it really takes to become successful and then being invested in themselves to a point, to a degree where now it is more than just a desire to make money. Now it's a life mission. Now the meaning of life and the purpose of their existence comes down to one thing, one thing only, and that is stop being poor. And these are the people which have always succeeded with my programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good stuff. So Matt, it was a true pleasure hosting you on the show. So many great nuggets. I would love to have you back sometime, you know, if you can possibly find the time. And guys, while you're here, go ahead and uh, type in Matt Morris, that's double R, mattmorris.com and uh, download the five-day video series that teaches you how to go from amateur to pro in network marketing. Now, even if you're not a network marketer listening to this, you should still get it because the principles... Matt spoke about on this call, obviously apply to success in internet marketing as well. And, you know, in many different areas of your life. So you owe it to yourself to grab a copy of that five-day course and uh, also consider joining Matt because this guy obviously knows what he's talking about. So Matt, thank you so much. And until next time we talk, have a great one. All right, man. Thanks so much for having me on. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to The Liz Building Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at lizbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one. This is the podcastfactory.com.